So if no one objects, I'd like to call to order our meeting of the environment. Charlie, hold one second. Okay, that's what I was waiting for. Somebody to say, don't go yet. <laughs> Charlie, you can proceed now. All right, thank you, Max. Uh, this is Charlie Garlow uh, of the Environment Committee, Advisory Committee to the Rehoboth Beach Mayor and Commissioners. It's Friday, September 4th at 11 o'clock in the morning, calling this meeting to order. This item of business after the call of order is the roll call. And if I may, uh, I'll call the roll by saying your name and then you can say hello and other si size of greeting. This is Charlie Garlow, I'm saying hello. Stuart Hawkins, uh, you want to say? Hello. Good, this is an audio test as well as everything else. Catherine Bergwin, I see you there. Hello. Very good, Janet Taylor-Smith, I see you there. I'm right here, good morning. Great, and there's Heather Metz. Hi everyone. Hi Heather. Uh, and then we have uh, Kevin Carr. Kevin Carr, are you there? Yes, I'm here. We don't have the video from you, Kevin, but if you do, Stay that way, that's all right by us. Okay. Uh, I was hoping that we might have Heather, uh, excuse me, Mary Peck on the line with us. I'm not, I think she might have sent me an email saying that she would not be able to meet with us this time. <laughs> is there anyone else on the line who is part of the Environment Committee? Nettie. Um, Nettie. Nettie. How no. do I skip over Nettie? It's okay. Nettie Greening. <laughs> She's <you>? flooded. <laughs> And maybe I'm flooded up by my brain cells. <laughs> In the event, sounds like we've got a quorum. Thank you. Some, oh, Dick Byrne as well. Charlie, I'm happy to be here. Good morning, everyone. Good. Good morning, Dick. Well, now have I missed anybody else other than Ann Will Mack and Max Handby from the city? Very good. Well, after the uh, <laughs> call to order, we have had the roll call. Then we have the approval of minutes. Uh, I'm hoping that all of you had received from our excellent uh, minutes from uh, Catherine Bergwin, the uh, minutes from last meeting of August 7. And thank you so much, Catherine, for continuing to serve in that role. You're wonderful. Any uh, ed edits or changes to the minute? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the minutes. I approve. Good, a motion from uh, Janet. Is there a second? A second. Second. Any, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. The minutes are approved. Next on the agenda is correspondence. I'll ask Womack, uh, ask Ann Womack if she has uh, received any additional correspondence other than um, no, any. Uh, the only correspondence that came in was I sent the email over to you yesterday from Dr. Trejos with all the attachments because there's like 400 some pages of attachments i am not embedding it into the agenda makes perfect sense thank you ann for passing that along well uh part of the, that correspondence uh, dr trejos t-r-a-h-o-s as i understand it uh <clears throat> i will say that we contacted him since he contacted the city uh commissioners like uh, Dick Byrne and others suggested this would be something our environment committee might look into. He has expertise and knowledge about uh, wireless communications facilities and 5G matters. Uh, I took the uh, initiative to invite him to come to this meeting to join us and share with us his thoughts or uh, suggestions or whatever. He was not able to meet this at this time. So I'm hoping that we might be able to get together with him at some other opportunity, I suggested that it wouldn't be good to wait all the way till our October meeting as things move rather quickly in the 5G wireless communications <laughs> area. Uh, so I'm thinking that we might set up just a telephone conference call that would not violate the open meetings for the requirements by not having a full quorum of our committee meet with him, but rather just have uh, one or two people uh, talk with him on the telephone. Um, I was hoping that perhaps, uh, Heather, did you uh, have a thought on that topic? Yeah, I would, um, I would love the opportunity to talk with him because I, I definitely think he had a very good point in saying that uh, we don't know if any of the wireless communications facilities are meeting the FCC requirements unless we actually do testing. 
And um, I'd love to talk to him some more about, about that. Hey, if uh, no one objects, uh, we'll ask Heather and perhaps Charlie to call up Dr. Trejos uh, soon after this meeting, somehow or other, uh, at a time that's con mutually convenient for everybody to uh, find out more about what he had to contribute. Um, if he has recommendations to make, I don't know that he had any specific recommendations in his communication to us the first time around, but we'll figure that out and see how that can add to our body of knowledge on this topic. Anything else we should say by way of update on the 5G matters, Heather? Um, well, do you guys want me to give you just a little summary of what happened when I presented the proposal to the yes. commission and the mayor, or is that later on the agenda? I think that's the very next thing on the agenda. Okay. You guys want to ask questions first? Go ahead. I, I just wanted to make a comment. Um, two things the, the, the come, the, um, that he stated, they only need to be two feet away. <laughs> from um, dwellings, which I thought was uh, very interesting according to the FCC, but also his noting of all the people in Rehoboth that might be able to help us with it that are certified or whatever. I thought that was very interesting. And then my, my last is just a question. So he contacted us versus we contacted him. He contacted us knowing that this was gonna, gonna be happening and what, was, what were we proposing, is that correct? Well, I don't know if he knew about our environment committee. Uh, Dick, do you want to answer that? No, I'm not sure that he did, but he's a very interested um, and concerned resident and citizen. He's a physician and uh, has a keen interest in a number of these areas and pays attention to what's going on with uh, the, the monthly commissioner meetings. And so he definitely heard reference to this Gotcha. And uh, and reached out and uh, and ended up putting his letter together, and then I uh, sent it on to Charlie. Hopefully, copied Heather. I can't remember. And um, and then you know that led to the next communication. So it it just seemed to me that um, you know an additional uh, highly qualified resource person that can help uh, the city think through some of these things. I, I think it can only be a plus to the direction that the environment committee has been going. Nice, thank you. I was just reading the piece that Catherine brought up about the two feet and the key word for me is supposedly, no radiation hazard supposedly exists. So meaning again, testing is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm, I'm wondering, it seems like with 400 pages of technical, very technical, you know, things that Ann sent us um, from him, I, I can't begin. I don't think we as a committee have the expertise, except maybe Heather, uh, to, to even deal with this. And I think that we need a person either as volunteer or paid um, to be on our committee or to be reporting to the city about this because it is highly, highly technical. And I, th I think we don't have the expertise. We need one of these experts, either him or one of these other people, you know, on our committee or at least, you know, as a volunteer or hired or whatever, you know, um, I just, if, if we could reach out to them and get them involved, I think, I think we need that. Yeah. Thank you, Nettie. Any other reactions to Nettie's idea or others? Seems to me, and Nettie, I would say that we should have a conversation with Dr. Trejos mm -hmm. to find out if he has something he could simplify, boil down for us, <laughs> so that we might be able to more easily get our brains wrapped around it. Uh, yeah. to, inform us. I mean, if he's so uh, technical that he can't communicate with normal, smart human beings like you and yes. me, that, uh, you know, he needs to learn how to summarize, and that would be good. On the other hand, uh, we are short a few members here on this environment committee. We might want to uh, yes. seek approval to ask him to join the committee if we yes. find that what he has to say or just is useful to us. Uh, but that, that's another possibility. Dick, uh, what do you think about that idea? 
Oh, I, yeah, I think any good resource people like, like Dr. Treyhouse should be considered. Now, as I say that, I think you're all aware that um, the mayor elect has sent an email out to all of you asking for your individual response in terms of your interest in continuing to serve on this committee going forward into the next year. So hopefully you're all individually responding to, uh, to Mayor-elect Mills and indicating an interest. That would be um, what I would advocate for that, uh, um, uh, you know, it's been a short time and I think in a short period of time of working together, you've, you've begun to gel together um, in some team work, some team efforts, some focus. And I would hope that uh, most, if not all of you would indicate your interest in going forward. So there will be an opportunity, I'm assuming, to, uh, to recommend um, you know, an additional member or two, depending on how this comes out. And in terms of uh, you know, how many of you and those that are not with us this morning, Charlie, in indicate their interest in going forward. Well, uh, it may be that everybody here has indicated that they would be interested in continuing serving on this committee. Is there anybody who's not taking uh, a chance to communicate with uh, Mayor-elect Mills? Have we all contacted him and said, yes, we'd like to serve continuing? Yes, there's a thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Very good. I can imagine that we have not had pe people from uh, like uh, Susan Morrison who asked that her participation be uh, put into a separate category, uh, maybe emeritus or something like that, because she really didn't feel like, uh, although she endorses our uh, uh, efforts, she just didn't feel like she had the bandwidth to continue. So she's uh, not been coming to meetings, although I continue to invite her, uh, thinking that, you know, her life free up some space to join us again, because she's such a great uh, person to have involved. But um, I imagine that she has not contacted uh, the mayor elect Mills. Same with Sammy Cunningham, who's a young man who is be interested in the environment, has never come to any of our meetings. Names uh, says that he's uh, working and uh, during the day, and uh, I'm glad he's got a job, uh, but he's never participated. I can imagine he may be not uh, reappointed if he's not going to raise his hand. And uh, right. although it was an effort on my part to try to encourage more people who are young. Of course, everybody here is young compared to oh. me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, yeah, speak uh, for yourself, Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Young so, at heart. <laughs> so it may be that Sam, Sammy Cunningham will not be uh, reappointed, in which case there's openings, if you will, uh, potential openings for other people. Uh, Catherine Bergwin, you have a uh, neighbor and friend that you had thought would be good for our gardening and butterfly bees Etc. committee or team effort, whatever it's called. Uh, and I would certainly be glad to entertain that as an idea. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about your name? Sure. Mary also knows him. Mary, we're allowed to unmute ourselves. Mary Peck, are you with us? There she is. Hi. Um, his name is Ernie. Um, what's his last name? Ernie? I can't remember. Do you know his last name, Mary? Uh, Richie? Richie, yeah. And how I met them is they, he and his husband live in my neighborhood and they rented this little house when they were converting, when they were doing renovations to their house, when I was still in Pittsburgh in the winter time. So we became really good friends. And he is two things about Ernie that I think would be very valuable to us. He, three things, um, he's a master gardener. So he's gone through all that master gardening, um, all those trainings. He is a native plant expert and he has this thing he's gotten me on about water management. And when I had my house lifted, this yard got destroyed, it was a mud pie. And he said, you know what? You just need to divert your water somewhere. So I built a drain at the bottom of the street where my um, driveway comes in. And that's where I got mostly, that's where I get flooded all the time. And I diverted all the water off of my roof into a pond in my yard. So everybody looks pretty flooded around me right now, but I am not. So I think his, his knowledge about native plants, gardening, and this issue about water management, which I do believe is an issue for Rehoboth as well, would be, would be valuable to us as a team. Plus he's a really nice guy. 
And not that that should be one of the criteria, but necessarily. We're all <laughs> but um, I just think he'd be very, a very valuable resource. And Mary can Mary's working with him right now on her landscaping. Maybe Mary, any thoughts on inviting him to be a potential uh, member of our environment committee? Have you talked to him about whether he'd be interested? Yeah, he would very much be interested. Huh? Yeah. So, so Charlie, if I can just Please interject and and thanks, Catherine, for that good recommendation. So there is an application process and an application online. So I would suggest that if this gentleman is interested um, that he should right away go ahead, complete the application and get it sent in. That'll go into Ann Womack. Um, the mayor elect is soliciting for, for new applicants for all of the committees. There's, there, there was a, uh, a little blurb in the Gazette last week advertising that there's been a couple of email notices that that have gone out from the city so it'd be very timely to do that okay i'll, I'll suggest that he would be very interested um but whatever he's also you know he's um his profession was engineering mm. all sounds good it does Maybe we can recommend to Mayor-elect Mills that uh, this applicant is uh, has been reviewed by us and is somebody we would love to have join our committee. Uh, we, that might help his application. So uh, is there a date or deadline for the applicants for various committees or is it just sort of, I didn't see the notice in the Gazette. Well, I, I, I'm not sure that there was a deadline. Um, the um, the committees with with legal standing in the state will be considered first because that is um, more more pertinent in terms of a, a more or less an October deadline. And then I think during the month of October, the other committees, such as the Environment Committee, and so on, um, applicants will be considered. So they'll be recommended from the from the uh, chairs of the committee um, up through. Uh, um, the mayor, uh, he will not be the mayor elect after the 18th. And then we'll come um, to the commissioners for, for approval. Um, I'm guessing in, in the month of October, I suppose it, it could go into November depending on other business. Great, Dick. Well, we'll pursue that and see if uh, make, maybe I can ask Catherine and Mary to ensure that Ernie uh, can pursue the application and that gets rolling. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dick, well, I've got you on the speaker there. Uh, let me yes. ask if you think that the uh, commissioners and the new mayor will be open to hearing proposals from us right away, or are they going to be so busy that we should hold off on additional <laughs> proposals? Because I think we're really we're ready to go on the single-use plastic stuff. We've uh, debated are. that a number of times and wiggled <laughs> the language, uh, but you know, I thought it was appropriate to not propose it. Uh, <laughs> under Mayor Coons because, you know, that administration was leaving and, well, frankly, they were already talking with us a lot about 5G, so I didn't want to right. dog tie so, along. With yeah, my advice is is to keep the ball rolling on all of these things, and I, um, Heather will share with you in a moment that, that she's already on the agenda for the September workshop next Tuesday morning. Isn't that true, Heather? I haven't seen anything, but I'll be, I'll be ready. <laughs> well, all right. I may be oh, speaking no. too soon. Um, maybe Lucky you're not you said on the agenda, it. maybe just the topic is, but I, I don't know how we could uh, discuss it without, without having you and Charlie there. So uh, let me double check that. Um, I, I may be getting ahead of myself. Let me just I'm double check that. I'm happy to be there. That. Oh, okay. So uh, at, at any rate, Charlie, the short answer for me would be to keep the ball rolling on these things because they're not gonna happen overnight. They're complicated and complex issues. And so I think there's gonna be a step-by-step -step process to move these ahead. Um, and it, particularly with the plastics um, to see, you know, what the state is gonna offer next week in their, in their virtual workshop and to be able to work off of that, I think is to the advantage of uh, of the city of Rehoboth Beach. So I'd keep the ball rolling on these things. Good. Well, then um, we'll 
Uh, I'm sorry, we got a hand up over there for Nettie. Um, when can we make this proposal? Because we have the proposal all together. I mean, when is an opportune time to make this proposal? <laughs> we've we've had it for quite a long time since last well, March. Sounds like Dick is saying that we could propose uh, send it in to okay the, the mayor. Then I would suggest if uh, you know if uh, if if you're all very comfortable with with the status of the proposal that um, we attempt to get it on the October workshop for the commissioners. And if there, too and that there be a presentation from, from a couple of you at that meeting. And if their agenda item is their, their agenda is too full then they'll push us back for a ways and that's okay too, but we'll- Well, um, you know, it's early September. So I would, uh, um, you know, let's reach out to the mayor elect and see if we can get it on the October workshop. Great, Catherine, I see your hand up. Yeah, according to our notes from our last meeting that um, what we decided is that you, Charlie, were going to submit it to Glenn Mendalis again. Uh -huh. And then after review by him, it was going to go to the mayor and the commissioners and that you would present it at the, um, will present the proposal at the September or October commissioners meeting. So that's what we said last time. If they and that, so. During that presentation, it was going to be really important to talk about what Stuart had presented last time about how to bring the, the businesses in. That, you know, Stuart had that meeting with Dan and um, Carol. And um, uh, I think that Dick said this, that it was really important to um, bring business community into the discussion on how to implement the proposal. So that's what we said last time. Thank you, Catherine, for reminding me. You're welcome. Us. Uh, and I will endeavor to make sure that I contact Lynn Mondalis again. I've already talked to him previously about it, but I'll make sure that I do that. Make sure we feel good. Yeah, I, and, I would say that's very important, Charlie. And I think, you know, just, just to reach out and make sure that both the, the chamber, Carol Everhart, and Main Street, uh, Dan, Dan Slagle, are supportive of moving this ahead. Because if they're not, then I think some work needs to be done in advance. In other words, you know, this is doing the homework to make sure that that kind of in, in a more holistic way people are on the side of moving this ahead. Well, it sounds like we're full blowing sliding into the discussion of the uh, single use plastics proposal. If I may, just before we get back to 5G, to say uh, that that really right, uh, I had a call from Carol from the Chamber of Commerce, and she said she would have to check with her team, her board, I guess it is, and that she would get back to me. And after a while, she did. And I think I may have reported, perhaps I didn't report, that Carol said that the, a lot of the businesses are just feeling overwhelmed. And they're just wondering if we can't put this off. And I said, well, you know, our recommendation was not to do it immediately. It was to do it come January of 2021. And I mean, if that's not enough time, if the business community feels like we're still up to their eyeballs and alligators, and can't do it on January 1st of 2021, we could we could be flexible. I mean, it's up to the mayors and commissioners to determine what the effective date is. We're just providing a recommended date. We thought that we had already sort of addressed Carol's concern. Uh, I don't know if that message got through to her somehow or other. She didn't connect, I think, as well as I was hoping she would by saying, oh, I didn't realize it was January of 2021, and that makes it all different. She never got to that. She just said, oh, things are so, everybody's in uh, hurting and we just don't want to do this right away. Well, I don't want to do it right away either. And we didn't recommend that it be done right away. Nettie, I see your hand. Uh, I, I think we can hide. I mean, people can hide, hide, hide with the uh, Corona, but uh, I, think, I think pushing for January, 2021 is a good idea. So just um, as far as our plan then, Charlie, will, were you finished? I'm sorry. I was just going to go ahead and say, uh, if, if no one objects, we'll propose January 2021. Uh, noting that Carol had her misgivings or concerns. I mean, it's not we got the same full-throated endorsement like we did from Dan from Main Street. Dan was great. He was gung-ho. Carol is more cautious. So uh, yeah. if that's the sort of well, thing, the thing you've heard about. It, it, it sounds like to me that She's not objecting to any specific aspects of it. Right. Um, so given that they're not getting into the nitty gritty of it, um, I think it's just 
a good idea to keep keep moving it forward and um you know there's nothing that she really wants to discuss specifically just the overall idea of any new burden on on businesses so um i don't think we need to toy with it anymore and um just put it in front of the commissioners and, and let them decide okay um yeah just, and just a comment I, I appreciate all the passion that's behind this and i totally believe in what the goal is um but the ultimate goal is to actually achieve what what this proposal is asking for and if the chamber were to come out strongly against it um it could be um, at least a temporary roadblock. So I think all the homework that can be done in advance of going to the commissioners, that means getting Main Street clearly on the side, it sounds like they are, but um, meeting again, um, getting a meeting, Charlie, with uh, uh, um, with Carol Everhart would, would be worthwhile. I think all that, all that can be done. And if that means um, <coughs> compromise, and I don't know what the compromise would be. If it's January 1, if it's April 1, if it's, you know, uh, I, I think we're better off. That's my advice. On the other hand, you know, I, I, hear, the, I hear the passion, I hear the interest here, um, but the commissioners are gonna listen closely to what these, these two influential groups in town have to say. And, and our small businesses on Main Street are struggling. They are hurting. And so uh, we need to be sensitive to that and figure out how do we achieve some compromise here, but also achieve the goal. Well, I agree with you, Dick, that we want to uh, do no harm to our small businesses in town. In fact, we believe that our proposal will actually cause no uh, financial impact on them. In fact, it may even benefit their bottom line because they're going to be buying fewer plastic bags because you know they're not they don't have to do that they'll be buying fewer straws because they won't have to do that uh there you know may be some additional cost in moving from a styrofoam clamshell over to a cardboard clamshell uh so that might be a small expense but on balance we're thinking or hoping that the business community would experience no negative economic impact from our proposal good Sell, sell Carol Everhart and her board on that. <laughs> well, I hope, <laughs> if Stuart, you want to try and uh, join me in meeting with Carol a second time to try to see if we can't wheel her out better on, you know, she asked that we not do it right away. What day would be good? What, uh, you know, what month? Uh, I would be happy to meet with, would take, meet, go with you to meet with her. Um, uh, to Dick's point, she does have a lot on her plate. She's losing restaurants. Um, she's lost Nicola. She's losing Agave. She lost Agave. She lost the Sea Witch Festival, which is the largest festival in this whole area. So uh, I get it. But at the same time, this proposal has shown where uh, not to hurt them. There's a revenue stream here in the straws. We can show it in a, in a, in the, the, in, in the proposal is the next steps, which means the implementation stage workshop, all that. There's also a revenue stream from the bag fees. So we are, I mean, I think we as the committee members are very, I am very sensitive having been on both sides of that equation mm -hmm. uh, to them. But yes, I, she has so much on her plate that, um, but this is something that is critical to our infrastructure um, and for us to hold up on this would be, in my opinion, a very serious mistake. We've had this on our plate for a year, over a year, and I'd like to see whatever we can do to continue to uh, uh, aggressively move it forward, unless we've had any critical negative comments that we need to address. And over the last year, these meetings have been streamed and for the public to make comments on and I don't believe that there have been any. I don't know where to look, but I don't believe there have been any. If so, then we would need to address them and and uh, and, and talk with those people. Well, maybe I could suggest that uh, Stuart and I call to Carol Everhart again to ask if we could uh, discuss in greater detail when she thinks uh, it would be appropriate to roll this out. And if we don't get anything from her that's more distinct than other 
that is more defined than I don't know or something, then we'll have to move ahead, sounds like to me. And Nettie, I see your hand waving. Uh, could I join you and I'll be quiet? Okay, I'll just. <laughs> you can certainly join us, and you do not have to be quiet. I'm glad, happy okay. to have you. Okay, I would I would like to join you. Any other topic? Any other discussion on this single use plastics topic? Just to, just for my end, Charlie, I will um, get a request to the mayor elect to um, get this topic on the October workshop. Okay, great. Thank you. Wonderful to have you uh, in our corner, Dick. Uh, can we move back? If, if we're completed discussion on single use plastic, we we'll move back to the discussion about 5G. Heather, you were asking if everybody, anybody had any questions about where we stood, Is that what we were talking about. Yeah, uh, let's see, where are we? That's my question. <laughs> well, would you, would you like me to give a little wrap up of what happened when I presented the proposal we approved last time at the meeting? Yes, I think that would be good. Okay, and Dick, Please feel free, since you're at the meeting as well, to interject here at any moment, because I have notes, but it's hard to take notes when you're talking. So I did sure. watch it again, but um, again, I just want to thank you guys for at the last meeting for approving the proposal so that I could take it to the mayor and commissioners. Um, we had a lot of good discussion. I was actually really even surprised that the mayor didn't table it for a future meeting. So that was really great. There were a lot of, it was a lot of very good discussion. Uh, there was some support for the idea of a residential setback of 60 feet with a conditional use or a special, I think conditional use was the proper term, which means that if anything is within 60 feet of a residence, uh, instead of being approved by the building inspector, it has to go to the mayor and commissioners for approval. Um, so that would make sure that everybody is notified and that would also enable the mayor and commissioners to use the um, aesthetic ordinance or the aesthetic requirements, which um, have been shown by the courts to be a legitimate reason to reject putting a wireless communications facility in a residential area. So um, there was some support for that. Uh, there was definitely some support for having the process become more transparent and notifying uh, people, in, especially in residential areas, but really everyone in the community when these uh, permits are being filed. Um, there was also some support for uh, going to the providers and trying to get an overall plan from them because what's been happening is they request two here and six over here. And then, you know, like Sharon Lynn will say, she thinks that's it, but then they'll come in with 19 more over here and six more over here. So we, we never really got a plan from anybody about, you know, what does it take to complete your build out in the city? We, we'd like to know that for long, long term planning for our CDP, uh, for a number of things. So there was some support for that. Uh, as far as the notification, it was interesting because I think that was requested by a couple of the commissioners. And um, so right after that, Kevin Williams from the city did give um, some information to the Cape Gazette and it was published in the Cape Gazette. I don't know if you guys read that article. Hopefully you saw it. Um, that was sort of communication that didn't come from the city. So I don't know if that's, that was their effort to communicate it to everybody. It's, it's a good start for sure. So that was good. Uh, and in the end, I think what we sort of decided is that uh, Cohen Law Group, who wrote the original ordinance, was going to review our proposal and uh, try to make a determination on what was workable and what wasn't. Um, I did suggest to Glenn that he may want to obtain a different law firm because there are some law firms that have represented other communities that have um, successful ordinances that have been able to protect their, especially their residential areas and maintain these setbacks. Um, there are some law firms, there were three in particular that I picked out uh, that I suggested that he contact to get another view because as Charlie pointed out as well to the city, if you ask one lawyer their opinion and then another lawyer, they might not agree. So um, uh, that wasn't necessarily gonna be acted on right away, but I was able to communicate those three law firms to Glenn and I haven't heard back from him yet. Um, so those were some good things. We, like I said, we had some really good discussions. Um, uh, on the other side, uh, I think we might be too late because the city now has, uh, I think the, that said 40, I'm counting 31, but I, I've kind of lost track of how many we have and how many are being requested. Um, and unfortunately, when those permits are filed with the city, 
depending on uh, whether it's new or gonna be co-located, the city only has 30 to 60 days to respond. And um, it's only subject to the ordinance that was in place before they requested the permit. So even if we change our ordinance tomorrow, we can't apply it to the wireless communications facilities that have just been requested. Uh, so we may be a little bit too late on some of those. Um, in particular, I just kind of wanted to point out to the city that I hope they treat that, I think there's three permit requests that are in residential areas. I hope they treat those with care. Um, one of them in particular is in front of a, a classic, beautiful old Rehoboth home. It's the one at 707 King Charles, if you have to happen to go by there. Um, it just kind of makes me really sad. Think about that. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention too is that, um, you know, really the, the, the health effects were always an issue for the Environment Committee, but what the courts gave us was not that. What the courts gave us when they decided one of the three lawsuits uh, was that you have, the city has the right to uh, accept or reject these based on aesthetics. So um, our comprehensive development plan, which according to Glenn, um, and I quote, has the full force and effect of law, does specifically outline um, the aesthetics of the city and the city can definitely use those to reject these, especially in our residential areas. Um, and just as an overall thing, you know, whether or not you've been following all the technicalities of this. And I appreciate that the doctor sent us all those documents with those hundreds and hundreds of pages. You know, sometimes I read that stuff and it's a lot, right? It's a lot to digest. But to think about this, we live in a one square mile city. There have been over 30 requests to put up wireless communications facilities in our city. That's in addition to two cell phone towers that flank the city. That's in addition to all the cell phone transmitters that are on the top of a Henlopen Hotel and the Star of the Sea and the water, both water towers. That's in addition to all those. I couldn't count those up if I had another week in town. I'd have to climb up there and count them all. There are multiple, multiple antennas on all these facilities. And now they want to put one every 275 feet on the boardwalk every 275 feet on the boardwalk. And I just ask if anybody in the public is listening, why, why? And does that seem reasonable to anybody? So anyway, I will leave, that's my, just my little personal commentary there at the end. Um, hopefully I gave you an overview of kind of what happened at the meeting. I'm still kind of waiting to hear back to see if Cohen Law Group had anything to add. And I really, really hope that over at City Hall, they're working really hard and taking this seriously because once you put one of these up, once Verizon gets to put up one of these, everybody gets put up one. So every provider can now put their antenna up. So multiply exponentially. We don't really know what's gonna happen. So I really, really hope that the city is treating this with, um, with a lot of care. So uh, questions, you guys must have questions. There's a question from Stuart. Uh, Heather, you're doing such an incredible job on this, and we appreciate it. And excuse my ignorance on this, but is the is the also the fact that these phone companies are probably listening to all of these meetings, and they're saying, "Well, Rehoboth might do something," because they don't know if we will or we won't. They don't know if the commissioners will or will not do something. So they're probably acting very, very quickly to get up as many as they can before we potentially change something. So that's that's just a comment for mainly for Dick's ears and for the commissioners. I hope that they're sensitive to that, that the fact that these phone companies are probably hustling like crazy and it's it's big business, so they have the money. The second, second this is a question. Uh, the governor came out obviously with a bill uh, or a statement last week that they're, they've got a $20 million budget for you know, as we're in this COVID until anything happens, they're trying to get to all these other communities, not necessarily Rehoboth Beach, but maybe, and for broadband for if school has to be done at home. Does that affect anything that you're doing, any of the work that you're doing, as you know? Um, it hasn't yet because uh, the money was just appropriated and the planning, you know, takes months and the equipment takes months to, to design and permit and install. But I would certainly hope that um, the, the telecommunications companies would leave us alone and go to the areas where school children do need this service and, and invest their money 
where it really can be needed rather than putting one every 275 feet so people can watch movies on the beach. I mean, it, it just doesn't <laughs> a really good use of resources. So I, I do hope that that money goes where it should. There are plenty of communi communities that could really use it. I, I know personally from my kids being in school that um, some, of the, some of the telecommunications companies have mobile units. Um, I saw one the, the other day at VCU, there's a park in, where students like to go and study and they have the little mobile unit that stands or that parks right on the side of the park. And so the kids are doing their schoolwork at the park, they can log in, it's free Wi-Fi. So, you know, if the money can be put towards those types of things, even if they're temporary, that, that would really help kids in underserved areas be able to go to school remotely. So I really hope they're that way and that maybe they could you know come back to us later <laughs> but wishful thinking probably thank you heather i had a question which was the article in cape gazette uh, featuring kevin williams discussing this topic uh, do you have a link to that can you send that around to all of us or send it to me oh sure everybody yeah sure yeah It'd be great so we can remember what that was about if we missed it the first time are there other questions for heather Catherine bergwin um two uh one is, can you send me your notes? Did you have notes for what you just presented to us? Sure. Can you just send them to me? Because I just things like that law firm and blah, blah, blah. I didn't catch like <laughs> sure. And then second thing is that I, I want to make sure I understand something. So if one provider gets approved, that means all the providers then can tack off of that approval? Is that what you said? The way that um, the FCC laws are designed is to encourage competition. So what they say is um, they don't want to exclude any provider. And the city is not allowed to do anything to say, well, AT&T, you can put yours up for Verizon, you can't. Gotcha. Right? So that's the general idea. So, And they also encourage this idea of co-location which means they're all encouraged to put their antennas on the same pole. But as we know here in town, if any of you have seen the pole that they put up at Stockley Street and the boardwalk, um, you know, it's just a little wooden pole. There's only so much room. It's not a, it's not a tower with multiple tiers and lots of space. Um, so if they can't co-locate, then they still have the right to put their antenna up. So we don't know what that's gonna look like in the future. Right now, AT and Verizon are uh, operating off completely different criteria, in my opinion, from what I've seen. Uh, AT&T is going for, well, first they went for the sleek design stuff on Rehoboth Avenue and the few hidden ones on the boardwalk in front of Sammy's that sort of blend in and you might not know they're there. But then they asked for ones on the wooden poles and now Verizon supposedly, and Dick, maybe you can put a little light on this. What I'm understanding from the email from Glenn was that the, all of the uh, 18 or 19 on the boardwalk from Verizon are supposed to be, they're taking down the light poles and putting up new light poles that have the antennas in them. So they'll be more, more hidden. But then mm -hmm. if that's for Verizon, then and if AT&T wants to put up 18 on the boardwalk, I don't really know where they go. So they might have to- I, I don't I know how yeah. that works. I don't either. Right. contemplated that yet. Mm -hmm. So just to be sure- just to be sure I understand, so AT&T both and Verizon would both need to get approval, but once they both get approval, they can go on the same poll if they want. Is that, is that That's my understanding. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And so does that mean That's twice as to, much? Twice then, there's, as many? then there's Sprint, and then according to somebody that I was communicating with, there's actually 40 other companies that do this in our country, and that's a little so does that mean more waves are coming out of that pole if you have three people located on a pole mm -hmm. wow mm -hmm. and i mean you know why they want to come to the boardwalk right because when the beach is full they're selling that service mm -hmm. and you know making a lot of money off the service that they're selling and you know everybody wants a piece of that action right at&t wants the action verizon you know they all want a piece of that that Rent, revenue coming in. And that, that's part of the reason why they're not putting them in the smaller towns, in the rural areas, is because the, the demand is there. So there's no return on their investment. I mean, it's sad to say, but it's really, you know, they're using these free competition things, but really it's just about how much money they make. Yeah. Oh. Heather, I had a question, just a technical question. Uh, the one at Stockley Street in the boardwalk, as I see it, it's a, a cylindrical thing that's uh, like Abraham Lincoln's top hat or whatever. Uh, if they wanted to put another one, could they just put another cylindrical thing on top of the other one and another one on top of that? How does I that work? 
I don't think so because even our ordinance has some protective language in it that says how many cubic feet of equipment they can put on the pole. Um, actually, the, what you see at the top of that pole is actually a 4G transmitter. It's not a 5G. The 5G are the little, the white things that are on the outside that are uh, flanking the pole, not on top of the pole. The top hat is actually the 4G transmitter, which those are the things that make me more nervous because they're higher, they th transmit more radio frequency. Uh, and they're way closer to us than if they were on a cell phone tower. So that's a concern, but um, there's only so much room on a pole and there are some restrictions about how much cubic foot of equipment you can put on each pole. So I, I don't know how the co-location is supposed to work in that in that sense. I haven't seen that in action yeah. anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Heather's accurate. I mean there certainly are height restrictions but um, another aspect of this is um, the, the companies seemingly are not very interested in co-locating their antennas on the same, whatever, tower, light pole, post, and so on. And we've had some discussion over the last couple of years with representatives of the vendors and commission meetings about, about co-locating and they just have every reason not to do that. Wow, so there would be instead of every 275 feet, there could be one every 50 feet if they're not going to co-locate. Co oh my goodness, it gets worse by the minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, Heather, well you. we all go to the beach to watch movies, right? Right, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's my cynical <laughs> comment. Okay. I want to <laughs> quiet. I want to hear just the ocean when I'm at the beach. Oh my. <laughs> Well, uh, Heather, thank you so much again for the excellent work you're doing there. And let's you and I follow up with Mr. Trajos, Dr. Trajos, and at the workshop and other good stuff along that way. If I may, in the remaining time, we have two other things. Charlie, there. could I just interject one more comment? Excuse me for interrupting. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I, when I get off of this call today, um, I will double check um, in terms of the, the workshop for next Tuesday. Um, because it's my sense that the mayor elect um, was asking to have this topic on, but I may have misinterpreted it. So let me just follow up and see um, what's going on so that you can be clear also in terms of your schedule, your time and so on. Great, thank you, Dave. Thank you. Okay, if I may, uh, I was hoping we might get a few uh, minutes to talk about two of the other topics which are on our current agenda namely uh, climate action plan idling of vehicles, all which relate to CO2 emissions. And the other one is our gardening, bee butterfly friendly, pollinator friendly opportunities. Uh, and Mary Peck has been wonderful to lead on the idea of idling. She and I are both very much into anti-idling <laughs> and that might be part of our climate action plan. But it seems to me we could make a suggestion for let's have a climate action plan which could you know, involve a lot of planning into the future, but what about doing something right away that's tangible and that can be done with very little effort, and that would be uh, a prohibiting idling. Mary, do you want to share with us your thoughts on that topic? Yeah, um, last month, I guess I had proposed that we just go and do the same as the city of Newark, because that would be really easy, because we already know that um, they're, they've been able to do it, and there haven't been any legal challenges, and um, and it's a pretty, and I looked at it, I thought it was a pretty solid ordinance where it doesn't just apply to the big trucks that the state regulates and it applies to all vehicles and, um, and it doesn't have any exceptions other than, you know, for um, police, which was sort of a controversial exception other than when they're in the actually emergency mode. Um, and it does have a few other exceptions in extreme temperatures for um, you know, certain people, but so it looks like something that was not too controversial and probably, you know, if we went with that, we, you know, it'd probably be pretty easy to, um, get it approved. I think most people in Rehoboth Beach, um, would, would welcome something like that. Um, and in fact, um, the problem, at, at least what I, anecdotally around here is a lot of, landscaping and work trucks that come into town and idle in front of people's residences um, 
and and we hear, we hear a lot of complaints about that. So this could kind of give another uh, tool um, where and you know you could call the police and they come and write a ticket. So I, I we talked about this before and I haven't really figured out you know whether we should just you know totally use new arts and plug in Rehoboth Beach um, where you know and just just see if you know we use the same one they they um, have gotten praise from the state for doing it and nobody seems to think there's any legal uh, obstacles to it. I had previously communicated with Mary saying, gee, why don't we do one better than Newark did? I mean, let's yeah. say no more than three minutes idling instead of five minutes idling before you've uh, violated things. And then I thought, you know, new cars and trucks, even the gasoline ones come out with a instant off. If you stop your car, gasoline car at a stoplight or stop sign, it turns the engine off. And then as soon as you put your foot on the accelerator pedal, it accelerates again. So that's a way of technology taking care of the problem. Maybe we could suggest that uh, that is, should be the way going forward that even whatever you've got, diesel or gasoline, it stops all the time. It doesn't have any permitted idling, if you will. Did you think I'm going too far and getting too radical, Mary? <laughs> uh, well, I don't, but um, you know, sometimes if you start, start with something uh, a little more and then that's a and people and see whether people find it reasonable or not you know and um if if anyone can come up with a good reason why three minutes is too strict then i haven't heard it yet but you know we could try it i have a question on that if i may go ahead janet um as far as reinforcement mary um who would be timing the three or five minutes does the yeah. <laughs> Police officer stand there with his his or her watch and just say, "Okay, that's been the <laughs> car." I mean, that's I love the concept, and I too get very upset of people idling, which I've seen a lot lately. Yeah. Um, and yeah, but I just hot. wonder how how we're gonna what is the how does New York enforce this? You have to you know that that's a good question, Janet, and I don't I don't know, but what I would guess is that probably. It's it's probably not a a, ha a heavy hammer. It's probably just people being told to turn the car off, and probably not a lot of tickets are given. And eventually, you know, you create a um, more knowledge and awareness around the issue, and people, you know, kind of don't do it anymore. But um, so yeah, I don't know whether when they actually write a, a citation to somebody, um, whether you know they could rely on a citizen observation probably um, or um, whether the police have to come there and sit for five minutes and watch it. I don't know. That's a good question. Okay. Thank you. I was hoping there might be a citizen's enforcement provision, not to say that citizens can write tickets, but they might be able to write a warning note or an educational note, if you will. Uh -huh. No vehicle has been idling. And did you know that there's an anti-ordling ordinance here and leave that on their windshield wiper blade? Uh, maybe that's uh, something that the uh, commissioners would approve. I saw Catherine's hand up. Is that right? Yeah, I um, I just have a question about it. This was a big issue at the Children's Institute um, with buses, and our, our our facility was located in a residential area. It was built over a hundred years ago. So once our school got so big, we were having as many as a hundred, hundred and twenty buses come every day. And the issue for them was always related to um, the weather, the temperature. That in the winter, they wanted to idle because then they could have their heat on. And in the summer, they wanted to idle because they could have their AC on. And because we would not allow 100 plus bus drivers into our facility. So I, I think that's my question is that why do these, especially I was in town today, big giant food trucks, um, idling is that because they're trying to refrigerate what they have in their in their um, mm -hmm. you know their trucks or what is the reason that people do this? I know when I'm at, at, at Rise Up, I, I get furious. People will go, they'll place an order, then they'll go back into their car <laughs> and turn their car on and not pollute everybody that's out there. So it's is it really related to temperature or is there some reason that you're going to spoil food in the trucks or something? And I just need to know that for my sake. Well, I don't know if anybody knows definitively why they do it unless we do interviews with people. 
but some suggestions I've had when I tried to confront some of the truck drivers, <laughs> they were taking my life in my hands there. Uh, they said, well, you know, it's so hard to get the diesel engine started again. And I said, wait a minute, you get in the car, you turn the key, it turns on. Uh, if, if it's not turning on, you need to get a tune-up. And a tune-up would be a good thing to have because that'll mean better gas mileage all the time. That'll save you money. And they looked at me like I was from planet Xenon or something, but that would be their argument. As to keeping things cold, frequently when they pull the truck in, they open up the back gate to pull all the goodies out that they're selling to the Royal Farms or whoever, or the dogfish head, and they'll leave the back gate completely wide open. So the idea that they have to run the uh, cooler or the freezer or the reefer or the making cold for that whole back area is, I think, bogus because all that cold power is going right out the back gate and they leave the back gate open the whole time they're inside with their two-wheel dolly or whatever it is and leave it idling too. It's just nuts. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. And you know, I know somebody who has a business where his employees were idling and he didn't know it um, and he was happy to, to, uh, to find out and stop because it's more expensive to him to um, have them idling their vehicles all day long. So sometimes it's not coming from the uh, owner of the company. It's just the employees that don't care. And, um, and I don't know whether they just don't want their truck to, to be hot for one minute when they go to the bathroom or, or what it is, but a lot of it is just mindless behavior, I think. And it's, you know, if they realize that they can't do it, they, then they can stop. Yeah, I'm not, I just really wanted to get to the bottom because when we when we tried to do this at the Children's Institute, the bus drivers flipped and um, eventually they, they came around. But once we at the Children's Institute realized that they don't want to be because they have to come and wait for half an hour, don't want to freeze in the winter and don't want to be hot in the summer, it made the whole debate slightly changed. Um, yeah. We had to. We agreed to let them come and sit in our. We just couldn't handle that many people coming into our building, so we agreed that they can sit around the grounds and stuff like that instead of having to wait in their really hot vehicles. So it made my point being that it really made a difference in our decision, and that's why I wondered what the real, what the reason is that these folks do this. I know at I know at Rise Up, it's because it's the air conditioning. Yeah, Stuart, I see your hand up. Yeah, Mary, uh, I don't, I, uh, if you can help us with some of the mm -hmm. things that you may have read about the Newark thing. I work for an organization called Village Volunteers out of Lewis, and they're now in Rehoboth. We were doing work in Rehoboth, and I'm on the board. Well, what we do is we help uh, people, seniors age in place. And a lot of what we do is we drive them <laughs> volunteers, 100% volunteers, drive them to errands. And let's just use an example, like if we're driving somebody to the post office to mail a package, and sometimes they're not really ambulatory because we don't have a ramp in our post office, so the driver, him or herself, would have to go in. Well, the person might have a respiratory or a circulatory issue, meaning an underlying conditions, as you've heard, we've heard this phrase since COVID, and there's many, many conditions like that, that would mean that they need to keep their temperature regulated. How did Newark address that kind of an issue? Because a Village Volunteers is in Rehoboth now, and it's going into South Coastal. It just got signed, we're just going into South Coastal, which is Ocean View and Bethany, that doesn't concern us, but it's gonna be up and down the coast. Have, have, did you have, have you had any experience with comments on that, on that vein? Well, um, I know that the ordinance that Newark has does have exception for temperatures above 90 maybe and, and or below a certain temperature for, um, and I think it mentions elderly um, and children mm -hmm. um, in there. <clears throat> I don't know whether, um, you know, what if it's 85, it's still gonna be hot in the car, um, but they do have these sort of uh, acknowledge of um, when the temperatures are extreme uh, in the ordinance, so. I don't know how that works with um, the example you gave, but um, so maybe that's a good argument for at least allowing five minutes of idling versus three. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can ask somebody in Newark whether what their experience has been so far with it. 
Great. Mary, Mary maybe I could ask you to invite them to attend our next meeting via Zoom or Ring, oh, yeah. Ring Central. And so they could be right here with us in this happy little circle and answer questions. <laughs> okay, I'll see if I can find someone who will do that. Great. If you've got a copy uh, electronic of the Newark ordinance, could you share that around everybody on our team here? Yeah, I think I had Ann put that in for the um, documents for last month. So um, um, I think you, you know, you could still probably get that link um, for, you know, if you go on the uh, city's website and see that our, you know, our, all our meeting um, stuff that's on there. Good. I think there should be probably put a live link to it. Well, uh, we have uh, run out of time today, but I do hope that the next time around we'll get more opportunities to talk about uh, the bee butterfly and pollinator friendly efforts that we would like to see the city take uh, some steps on, uh, like not using pesticides in uh, city owned properties uh, that would kill off the ever dwindling number of butterflies. This is supposed to be butterfly season right about now. And I noticed in our garden that we're not having as many butterflies as we used to. Uh, and the, the more scientific statisticians will tell you, yes, that's true. And for bees as well, and moths and other things that fly around and pollinate. Uh, at the same time, we might be talking about native plants as opposed to others, oak trees that are better for the um, caterpillars that are needed to feed the birds, you know, all those sorts of things. It's all connected, right? Uh, so to the extent that people are interested in those topics, uh, come loaded for bear next time around, <laughs> and we'll get a chance to hear more thoroughly hear your thoughts on what we would like to propose in the area of uh, gardening, native plants, pesticides, et cetera. Are there other aspects of that you'd like to bring up, Catherine? Uh, just one comment. Yes, Mary, your idling of vehicles is in the agenda from our last meeting. Yeah. Um, I also, I just wonder whether we can get approved for um, a long, longer meeting and whether people su would support that. Um, I'd be glad to have that happen, but um, we need to convince Max and Ann, I think that they've got enough time for us. Yeah. But I agree that we always seem like we're running out of time. Yeah. I try to talk as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, are there other things that we should say before we bring down the curtain on this fantastic show? Yeah. Uh, um, Charlie, could you, just quickly, I've, I've checked since we were talking about 5G, and it appears that the mayor elect um, is asking for that topic to be on the September 18th commissioner. <laughs> So there'll be um, more time to communicate about the details of that. Thank you, Dick. Uh, Dick, does that Thank mean you. we'll be on the workshop meeting before that or? No. No, okay. No, because um, the 18th is when uh, the mayor elect is sworn in and, and, and then two new commissioners are sworn in and then that'll be at the beginning of the meeting and then we'll go on into the business of the of the mayor and the commissioners. That's nothing happening on the 15th, but yes, on the, the, the 18th. 18th is what's going to happen. Maybe at that time, we'll have an opportunity to remind them that part of our proposal was that we have the city ask the state of Delaware to look into the health impacts, something that I don't think that we got around to talking to. So maybe we can bring that one back up again and say, you forgot to, you forgot to consider this part of things. I agree, but. <laughs> That's right. Very good. Well, uh, there's, of course, another topic I think we might want to add on to our uh, agenda for the future, and that's recycling. I know that our mayor-elect uh, mm -hmm. is very big into it, and uh, it's uh, something that's on the uh, perhaps farther down the road agenda. I know Nettie is shaking her head vigorously, so she wants to see more recycling bins all over town, perhaps, to make sure that we do a better job of recycling, but that's uh, farther away, I'm, I think. Any, any last comments from anybody before we're seeing a motion for adjournment? So moved. moved by Heather and a second by Stuart. Any objection? This meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you all so much for the wonderful things you are doing. I'm so pleased to have you be part of our team.